please welcome Michael Mazurik, vegetable breeder, and the Calvin Noyes Keeney, assistant professor of plant breeding, Cornell University. Hello. I'm Michael Mazurik, assistant professor at Cornell University and a vegetable breeder, or as this community has renamed me, a, a seed breeder. My thought for food is new partnerships will start spark a resurgence in public plant breeding. In nature, plants and animals evolve. Every generation, the survival of the fittest ensures they'll continue to adapt to their environments. Adaptation is a function of our environment. As a plant breeder, Plant breeding is assisted adaptation. It's based on that nature's principles. It's not artificial. We work behind the scenes, guiding the evolutions of the seeds we plant agriculture to grow our food. As we look to future resilience, to pests, disease, water, temperature challenges of climate change, plant breeders, organic plant breeders like myself, use traditional methods of cross-pollination, just as bees do randomly in a garden. The difference, of course, is I am pollinating with a vision for change and propagating the plants that best meet our goals. While this directed change in our food may be shocking news, this breeding is a timeless activity of humanity. Farmers have been selecting seeds for thousands of years. It's the process that brought us sweet and crisp apples and heirloom apples. The wild ancestors are hard and small. Similarly, heirloom tomatoes, that's right, brandy wine tomatoes haven't always been on the planet. Right? They were created through plant breeding. Right? So we've been working on this endeavor for eons. It's a process that domesticated all of our crops from the wild ancestors. So for a plant, plant breeder like me to develop seed for future sustainable organic production, it's vital to be able to test it in the environment the seed was destined for. That way I get feedback, can incorporate that feedback in the next wave of breeding. Programs like ours at Cornell have thousands of seeds in cold storage. I carry this collection that dates back to the 1940s. It contains promising prototypes that never found a place in the market, prototypes that were never finished, and also in the world's stock of landmark cultivars of the past. If you ever had a market more cucumber, that's what we're maintaining in this collection. So <clears throat> Jack Algier from the Stone Barn Center was one of the first farmers to come to us, uh, to Cornell, to forge a partnership back in 2006. He came to us seeking seed he could add to this farm that would offer benefits he couldn't find elsewhere in the marketplace. And we were really eager to explore the performance of these seeds on this progressive farm. As we opened up our seed vault to him, he opened us up to another really important partnership, that with Chef Dan Barber. What this gave us was unique three-way collaboration where we could trial the seeds in Jack Fields test the resulting fruits and vegetables in the kitchen on the table at Blue Hill in Manhattan and here at Stone Barns. So our first collaboration was on the development of honey nut squash. It subsequently became one of the first miniature butternut squashes and we believe one of the tastiest squashes ever. So it thrived for Jack in the field, excelled for Dan, resulting in a popularity of a squash which otherwise its prototype was just sitting on the shelf, gathering dust in our seed vault. Now you find it throughout the markets in our area, seed from uh, high mowing organic seeds. Over the, fast, over the past few years, Jack, Dan, and I have explored other crops. Uh, we've worked on purple potted peas, striped snacking peppers, and we continue to improve on honey nut. The results in the past few seasons have been 898, working with Blue Heron Farm, Robin's Kogi Nut Squash, and both offshoots of Honey Nut. Honey Nut isn't finished, it continues to evolve into new squash. So feedback from farmers in Blue Hill is critical to us to guide our exploration, uh, to build in disease resistance, better storage, and push for crops with better flavor. This past weekend, uh, those seed matters convened all the public plant breeders in the U.S. working together on seed for food for organic systems. There were only five of us, right? <laughs> right? But this is a challenge, right? So if we're looking to how we're going to create, you know, the seeds that the next generation of farmers is going to need if the average age of a farmer is 58, you know, who's going to be providing the seed for this next generation of our cohort? There's only two. So where is the seed going to come from? Who's going to be evolving the seed, the seed to solve this goal? So I'm, suppo I'm supposed to be a driver of evolution, but I'm on the brink of extinction. Right? Right? 
But with supports, and there's a hope, with support from nonprofits and with thanks in particular to USDA's National Institute of Food and Agriculture, I get support for much of my breeding. And this helps me train the next generation of plant breeders to solve this gap. Right? So partnership like ours give voices, uh, give farmers access to new seed varieties, which in turn give farmers the ability to distinguish themselves in the marketplace. Partnership like ours help restore diversity to our diets, resilience to our farms. Partnerships like ours wet appetites for better flavor. Partnerships like ours can serve as a model for how farmers can participate in their own communities to shape the seeds of their future. Partnerships like ours can do more than create new seeds uh, for farmers. It cal they, cal they cultivate a diversity of alternatives for food system change. Thank you. Thank you.